as both an artist and a therapist, I find that um, I often get my clients to talk to me about what's happening to them by using paint and getting them to paint in colour and shape how they feel about what they're going through and what they want to discuss with me. I do that quite a lot for myself as well, even though I'm a figurative artist. And today I want to just explore how I feel about what is happening with COVID-19 or coronavirus and uh, how it has affected me. I don't know, it's affected, it affects everybody in different ways. And what I have here is a canvas that I've prepared, which has also got a, an integral frame and the two are nailed together. I've made sure they are. And this canvas was previously something I didn't like very much. So I've now got a lovely surface, a really interesting surface under here to work with because um, I've painted over the other painting. And I'm going to start with um, pretty much how my life looked before all this started. And my life looked quite good, actually. Um, I had uh, lots of poetry readings. I write poetry. I had lots of poetry readings arranged. I had expectation of um, completing a poetry collection, a poetry book. I had hope. The biggest thing was I had hope and I had plans. There are things that I wanted to do and there are things that I was engaged to do and there were means by which I would meet and engage with other people. So up in the sky there I had a lot of very good um, very good blue colour. <laughs> um, I had a, I had a lot of um, things going on in my head. I would I was working towards I was working towards finishing a poetry collection, working for an art show in London in November. This November, if this COVID nineteen is ever over. Anyway, a lot of uh, blue. So I always think of blue as being very happy. So through my life, I had the expectation of happiness. I had sensation of happiness. Although I have to tell you, I do not think happiness is a right. I do not think that you wake up in the morning and you should just be happy. I think you have to work at being happy. I think happiness is often a byproduct of everything else. And I think if we're not happy, you don't necessarily reach for a pill or a bottle. First of all, you try and find out what it is, what are the root causes. Is it psychological? Is it your brain chemistry? Is it your, your way of living? Is it your marital status? Is it, um, you know, what is it? Is it your job? Um, come and see a therapist. This is what we're here for. Anyway, so getting into the blues, there's a, there's this is going to be a great deal finish off by the way, but uh, not necessarily while you're watching. So I had hope. I had poetry readings. I had plans for my art show, and I had the expectation of friends. I was going to see lots of friends. I was going to be social. I live like a hermit, except when I'm seeing clients or when I'm actually publicizing a book or artwork. So it was important to me to get out. And I had planned to get out quite a lot, especially around my 60th birthday on April the 1st. I've got a dog down here who's getting covered in paint. <laughs> um, Sam and Meg, actually, I've got two dogs. They might put in an appearance later. However, my 60th birthday on the 1st of April did not go according to plan. Having been a hermit for weeks and weeks and weeks, I then discovered that I was going to have to carry on being a hermit. I had dinners in London planned. A friend was going to put on a dinner for me. I was going to meet other friends. I was going to come back to Wales where I live. I was going to have a bit of a party. It was going to be marvelous. At least I had planned it to be marvelous. And um, instead, I end up staying at home and the most exciting thing I do, and I'm very, very lucky, I know that, I'm surrounded by fields and sheep. My problem is if I take, get on a motorbike, I ride a motorbike, and I go and photograph sheep, some overzealous policeman is inclined to come up to me and tell me to go home because I'm not working and I'm not doing, it's not an essential trip. Well, the fact of, would be I'd be surrounded by 150 acres of nothingness except sheep. But um, however, 
it's needs must and the sooner this is over the better and we can all get out i can't wait so yellow i will see as happiness and i need actually more happiness in there because i was expecting to see friends and it was going to be important and friends to me are yellow and they're orange and so i had big plans and um, expectations and preparations and in fact in making the preparations of course i was talking to an awful lot of people which was good because i got to speak to a number of them and a number of friends inviting them to these various um, events that i was banking on um, getting me out of my solitude i've noticed if i record things um is a very frequent joiner it's because we don't like to leave a silent so we're going um 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 all the time or in fact we should just be silent and i should just be silent because i can just cut this in can't i i'm going to have to learn um how to do it there's another um in there in case you didn't notice i'm going to have to learn how to do that just cut bits of film clip in or cut bits of myself out Now, I actually just am splodging this on with a paintbrush, although it's not as effective as I, f I find a palette knife. I like a palette knife. I also really like this rough texture I've got under here. Now, I'm just going to cover up some more of this canvas with um, happy, happy, happy. We'll do the edges later that uh, the wooden frame is part of the canvas for this purpose. I had a whole load of these wooden frames made and they're marvellous and I used to use them just as big white borders so that if clients had really busy wallpaper, you know, imagine something flock or, you know, dark coloured, then there'd be a nice big white border to set my painting off and so that the wallpaper or the uh, wall colouring wouldn't annihilate it. So here's me, happy. Planning for my year. The one thing that uh, I did rely on quite a lot, and I was surprised it was so as important as it has turned out to be, is the end of every working day um, I'd work in the office or the studio, and then I'd go for a motorbike ride. And that was my joy. It would clear my head, it would get me out of the walls where I'd uh, been staring into space, wondering what to work on next, or wondering what my next word or my next brush stroke should be. And uh, suddenly, no more motorbike rides. So for me, um, Stir crazy. Stir crazy is relative, isn't it? There are going to be people in very small spaces with other relatives or friends closeted with them, and they're going to be um, climbing all over each other and driving each other insane. I fortunately don't have that. Um, you could say it's a blessing or a curse, but um, I'm a little short of family members. Um, anybody who knows my family history would know that. So, uh, no worries there. But I have a lot of animals. And when all this closed down, um, we didn't know it was necessarily coming. But social distancing didn't work, did it? Because when they said socially distanced, nobody did enough of it. Which is why we ended up where we are. And that annoys me. Because if everybody is socially distanced, Perhaps we wouldn't have had to go into lockdown. Um, but uh, I have owls, and people give me owls when they don't want them anymore, and if I have room. And I have 15 owls currently, and the owls really only recognise mice and frozen chicks, or defrosted frozen chicks. The thing with a mouse a mouse is one pound to one pound forty and owls can eat a lot of them but a defrosted day old chick they come in boxes of 250 and they're very cheap and the owls 
live on them. It's their staple diet. They wouldn't know a dead rabbit if I threw one at them. So when all this was closing down, I realized that my freezer wasn't big enough. And I was going to have to find more storage space, except all the freezers had sold out. So I got, finally got um, a local company near where I live to search out three small upright freezers one because nobody knew they had it and two because they were small and nobody wanted them and I was desperate and uh, so on Monday March the 23rd I went to collect three freezers in my van which I use for my art shows and motorbikes and things and all I can say is I'm very lucky to have a van and I went to collect the freezers and then I went to collect 20 boxes of frozen chicks. And two hours later, Boris Johnson said, everything's going to shut. And I just managed to make it because unfortunately, my supplier of frozen chicks also shut. They did not stay open as um, one might have hoped they, did, they would. Now, here we are with a rough background of fairly very light and happy. Not a lot happening. But um, I'm going to get a palette knife on this. And the other thing is I find that, um, you know, brush, a brush gets paint on rather more thinly than I like. And I do like a palette knife because you can thicken things up a bit. And also then the surface underneath begins to make itself felt. And I enjoy that. I also enjoy often mixing the paint on the canvas. It is a joy for me to do that. I don't need to put it on all mixed in perfectly, I find. And I'm just trying to remember how happy was I? How happy was I with all those poetry readings? I was going to read at the Oxford Literary Festival on the 31st of March. And that night we were going to have a celebratory supper because it was going to be the eve of my 60th birthday. I can't believe I'm 60. I say I'm 60 years old and I feel as though I'm talking about some unrelated woman altogether. But um, here we go, more blue, more white. Just get some white in there to lighten up the blue because I was lightly happy, I was very happy. I also had um, chores and there are the usual worries and uh, sometimes I wish I had a proper job again because I had a proper wage. Although, where would my proper job be right now? One of the things I do love is just yellow. Yellow makes me smile. I love yellow roses. My mother liked yellow roses too. And um, I find that rather curious that I grew up loving yellow roses without ever knowing that my mother did too. And. Um, my happiness went off in all directions. My dogs are my happiness too. And then there are some shapes. You see, when I start an abstract or any, I'm not no, I've got no bloody idea where it's going. But I just think, okay, how did I feel? I felt green and blue. But I also felt um, Pressure. I always feel pressure to work. I don't know why. Nobody ever taught me that you've got to work no matter what. I used to read books, but now if I sit down and read a book, I feel guilty. I really love the way palette knives put paint on. A bit like icing a cake. If you're good at icing a cake, I bet you could do this. The dogs are getting restless. You can't see that dog. I think she wants to go out and pee. <laughs> I think I better go and let her go out and pee. You oh Maggie, come on, Meg. Let's let you out. Come on. Joke. 